So today uh, we're obviously talking about um, community engagement. So whilst Andrew's just talked to you about growing demand, what I'm talking about is really about maintaining that demand and ensuring that the community continues to trust the industry and feel good about purchasing beef. So I'll do that by talking about some of our consumer research. We'll also have a look at some of the external pressures that are on the industry. We'll have a brief look at the concept of social licence. And then finally, we'll finish on how MLA is assisting industry in this area. So we've undertaken this consumer tracking for five years now. And it's really looking at what emerging concerns are there within the community, and specifically with environment and welfare. So above the dotted line there, you'll see, no surprises, the key drivers continue to be freshness and price. But below that line are these areas that the community, they generally lump into sustainability or environment and welfare. So whilst individually they're not huge numbers, collectively they, they are something that we need to keep an eye on. When we look a little bit more into environment, we're looking and seeing the grey boxes down the centre there. For most people, they don't really have an opinion one way or the other, but if they do, they, they veer towards the more positive end of the industry. So numbers like, you know, only 9% of people disagreeing that cattle producers care about the environment. We won't go into all the detail, but the overwhelming message is that the community trusts the industry in this area. Similar story with welfare. So, you know, um, farmed and raised in a humane manner, only 9% disagreeing there. Um, and again, there's a little negativity, but a lot of people are just in that middle section. They don't really have an opinion. And to be honest with you, it's because they don't give it too much thought. There's a lot of other pressures on people and they just trust that the right thing's happening. So we need to ensure that they continue to maintain that trust. When prompted, we look at, you know, where are the concerns and things like, you know, hormones in beef pop up in the last couple of years. And no surprise there, it's obviously been driven by a major retailer. Also, we look at, you know, at animal at abattoirs and animal welfare on farms. So this is quite an interesting slide. It's looking at if people do have concerns and we push them to have concerns by this point, where in the supply chain are those concerns? So if we go towards the bottom of the slide, you know, slaughter, probably no surprises there. People prefer not to think about it. When we do focus groups, they think that it's probably undertaken really well in Australia, but you know, naturally feel a bit uncomfortable about it. Live transport, obviously been a lot of publicity around there. One that's surprising quite often is, is domestic transport of animals, and that's something that there is a growing concern within the community. Um, feedlots, again, people don't just, it doesn't naturally fit well for them, so there's a big education piece to be done there. But something that you'll see is trending up, there we go, is the on-farm piece. So traditionally there's been a huge amount of trust on-farm, and this is something where we need to make sure we get on the front foot and get our stories out there. So that's a very brief snapshot of the research, but this is the slide that we use to really track overall how the industry is performing in this area. So you'll see on the left is um, health and expense, and then we have animal welfare and environment. And interestingly, over the five years of tracking, you'll see at the same time as the animal welfare concerns are going up, environment's trending down. And the researchers tell us it's basically the same group of people that are moving from issue to issue, depending on what's kind of current in the media, social media at the time. So this is our group of really engaged com consumers. And this is where we focus our program. Um, so you see just on the far right there is the animal welfare and environment combined. Over the five years of tracking, that's relatively stable, stable at around 5%. So, sometimes I show this up front because this is what the industry sees. There's obviously a lot of attacks on the industry. You have things like Pamela Anderson out there talking about don't eat meat. You've got the environment debates, the amount of water, the amount of methane, issues like test tube meat coming up. There's a lot of negative messages out there. But as you've seen with the consumer research, they're not actually getting through. People continue to feel good about the product and that puts the industry in a really good position. At the same time, we're also seeing others are starting to lead a lot of the discussions around sustainability. So with chicken and pork, you know, RSPCA is almost kind of seen as the authority on what's sustainable and what's not in that area. And you would have seen over the last week or so more discussions around McDonald's and their commitment to <coughs> source sustainable beef by 2016. But, you know, pleasingly McDonald's, and like a lot of 
major customers are saying, we want to work with you, we want to work with the industry and understand what this means in an Australian context. So you would have heard probably lately about this whole concept of social licence. And we don't have time to go into it in our 15 minutes here. We'll be holding sessions in the MLA Marquee tomorrow on Friday with Catherine Marriott, we'll go into a lot more detail. But essentially, you know, if you're in the, in the reactive space, you're letting others enforce those standards on you. Whereas we want to be in the proactive position where industry is leading these discussions. And we need to firstly address what the community concerns are. We need to do that education piece. So not just at the school level, but with people, the key influencers. We also need to look seriously at things like BMPs and best management. Because increasingly customers are saying, we do trust you, we trust the Australian industry is one of the greatest performers, but we need something to underpin that. You know, prove to us your good environmental management, prove to us your good animal welfare standards. So just a few points on kind of how to maintain industry social licence. We need to understand the community and their concerns. So I think this is a bit of a change across a lot of industries. It's moved from us telling everyone, these are the standards, this is how we perform, we're doing an excellent job. You know, the community and their concerns, they're genuine and we need to understand what they are, hear them, acknowledge them, and then respond appropriately. So that's around that demonstrating piece, but also then show the community how we're taking action in those areas. Communication and open up. So this is something that is, is a big point of debate through the industry at the moment. There's a lot of, well, should we talk about those practices? And I think people are starting to accept that best practice is we get those issues, we lay them on the table, and we have those open and genuine conversations with the community. And really it's about you know, us getting on the front foot and being proactive. So MLA, together with industry, is starting to do quite a bit of work around this social licence issue. And some of you may have been to our focus groups through the week. This is from an earlier piece of research where we spoke to the peak industry bodies, we spoke to retailers, we spoke to key environment and animal welfare groups. And we asked all of them, what do they see as the priority issues? And where there are those gaps, they're kind of seen as areas of weakness or potential weakness for the industry. So what's been coming up so far is animal welfare um, and kind of domestic transport in particular and to a lesser extent issues around sustainability. So before I go into talking about the community engagement program, it's helpful to think about just how we position this because whilst you've just heard about the mass beef campaign, that's very much for all consumers. Whereas with the community engagement we've seen from that research, there's about five to ten of the population, five to ten percent of the population who are interested in this. So we want to make sure that we're very targeted there. And I've just put this diagram together. So you've got, you know, you're highly engaged, and over time they, they, their opinions bleed out to, I guess, the general public. So at this point, we don't need to be talking to the whole public, but we need to make sure the information's available for them if they want it. So if we're looking at our highly engaged, we also need to know, well, who influences them? And they see groups, environment groups, welfare groups, or NGOs as highly credible. So industry needs to be in there having those discussions and arming them with the correct information. Um, retailers, likewise, almost setting pseudo standards. So the industry is working closely with them. And they obviously get their information through media, social media. So our programs are focused there. So within the program, we have four key areas. Um, firstly is our proactive communications platform, which is Target 100, which hopefully a lot of people have seen. That's where we've acknowledged what those community concerns are, and for people that want the information, whether it's on domestic transport or welfare, they can go there, we acknowledge that concern, look at the Australian context, and importantly the research that we're undertaking for that continual improvement piece. But it's not just about a faceless industry. So the key piece of Target 100 is the farmer or producer case studies that are up there. So we have about 200, 250 up there at the moment, but I'd encourage everyone to get on and have a look. It takes about 20 minutes to set up a case study, and what it does is it demonstrates to the community that it's not just a faceless industry, that we're all committed to not only producing the best beef in the world, but doing it in a sustainable way. Um, another key area of the program is the schools. So obviously everyone's pretty passionate about making sure we're educating the next generation. So we do that through a number of ways, like working with the Primary Industries Education Foundation, 
And we've also produced a whole series of guides, um, teacher training guides that are curriculum aligned. Uh, issues management is another area. So whilst we'd love to be playing in the proactive space all the time, there are issues that pop up. So MLA works with industry on responding to those through media, social media, etc. And also, f finally, capability building. As I said, you know, the public doesn't trust industry bodies. They trust people. They want to connect with people, and particularly producers. So we've done things like run social media workshops across the country, also advocacy workshops. And you know, we are a resource for the industry. So if you ever need any assistance with any of these things, be sure to get in touch. Uh, finally, just to finish, I thought I'd show an example also of how we bring together or bring to life some of the research that MLA undertakes. So within this area, you know, with the concerns around environment, you know, you all see those crazy figures like 100,000 litres of water to produce a kilogram of beef, cattle worse than coal. So a fantastic study has just come out that MLA coordinated with 30 years of environmental trends. And it's shown over that period 65% reduction in water use um, per kilo, 14% reduction in emissions per kilo. So we've taken that information, we spread it out through the media, and we've also done things like develop these infographics, which we then utilise through social media. But again, it's not just about MLA getting these out there. You know, if everyone's following us on our Facebook, our Twitter page, for starters, you can then pick that up, spread that out through your networks. So the more we can spread this message, the better. So that's it for me pretty well. So we've got lots of flyers in the marquee about advocating for your industry. And as I said, we're here to help. So if anyone needs any assistance, be sure to come and say hello. And they're my contact details, so feel free to get in touch. Thanks. <laughs>